feel the power but to attract attention away from it. Job for the people blocks was amazingly good at his job. The crowd gasped, dazzled by sun and seamanship as the president speedboat zipped around, zipped around the headland into the bay. It flashed and shone as it came skating of the skate, skating of the sea in wide skidding turns. In fact, it didn't need to touch the water at all because it was supposed to have a cushion of ionized atom, but just for effect it was pitted with its thin, thin pin blade which could be lowered into the water. They slashed the sheet of water, fishing into the air, carved deep gushes in the sea, which swayed gradually and sank back, <coughs> sank back, forming the boat wakes as it uh, carried across the bay. Zappo it loved the effect. It was what he was best at. The twist and the wheel sharply, the boat slewed around the wide ski, siding skied beneath the cliff face and dropped last lightly the rock waves. Within seconds, he ran out on the deck and waved and grinned over three billion people. The three billion people weren't actually there, but they watched his every gesture through the eyes of a small robot 3D camera, which hovered obsequiously, obsequiously uh, in the air nearby. The uh, antics of the president, antics of the president, always made amazingly popular 3D. That's what they were for. He grinned again. Three billion and six people didn't know it, but today would be a bigger antique than anyone had bargained for. The robot camera homed in for a close-up to a more popular of his two heads and more he waved again. He was roughly humanoid in appearance except for an extra head and third arm. His pale towels hair stuck out in random direction. His blue eye glinted with something completely unidentifiable, and his chins were almost always unshaven. A twenty-foot-high transparent globe floated next to his boat, rolling and bowling, glistening in the brilliant sun. Inside it floated a wide semi-circular sofa, upholstered in glorious red leather. The more the club bubbled and rolled, the more the sofa stayed perfectly still, stayed as on a four-story rock. Again, all done for effect as much as anything. Chapoid stepped through the wall of the club and relaxed on the sofa. He spread his two arms along the back and with a third brushed some dust off his knee. His head looked about smiling. He put his feet up. At any moment, he thought he might scream. Water boiled beneath the bubble. It ceases and spouted. The bubble surged up the air, bobbing and rolling on the water spout. Up, up, it climbed, throwing stills of light at the cliff. Up, it surged on the jet, the water falling from beneath it crashing back into a sea hundred feet below. Jaffoid smiled, picturing himself a thoroughly ridiculous form, ridiculous form of transport, but a thoroughly beautiful one. At the top of the cliff, the globe, the globe wavered for a moment, tipped onto a railed ramp, rolled down it to a small concave platform, and riddled to Held. The tremendous Apollo suffered people who stepped out of the bubble with orange shashi blazing in the right. The president of the galaxy had arrived. He waved for the Apollo to die down, then raised his hand in greeting. 
Hi, he said. A government spider sailed up to him and attempted to press a copy of his prepared speech into his hand. Page 3 to 7 of the original version was at the moment floating soggingly on the Damagran Sea and some five miles out from the bay. Page 1 and 2 had been salvaged by the Damagran Front to Crystal and Eagle and had already become incorporated into an extraordinary new form of a nest which the Eagle had invented. It, uh, it was constructed largely of paper uh, mache. Paper mache, it was virtually impossible for a newly hatched baby eagle to break out of it. The Damagran front crossed the eagle, had heard of the notion of survival of the species, but wanted no truck with it. Japa frogs would not do needing his set speech, and he gently deflected the one being offered him by the spider. Hi, he said again. Everyone beamed at him and last nearly everyone. He singled out Trillion from the crowd. Trillion was a girl that Jaffoid had picked up recently with visiting a planet just for fun in Gongunito. She was a slim, darkish humanoid with long waves of black hair, a few mouths, a odd little knob of a nose, and a ridiculously brown eyes. With her red headscarf knotted in that particular way, and her long, flowing, flowing, flowing silky brown dress, she looked vaguely Arabic. Not that anyone they all had ever heard of Arab, of course. The Arab had very recently ceased to exist, and even then, they had existed there were 500,000 light years from Damogran. Trillion wasn't anybody in particular, or so Japoid claimed. She just went around with him rather a lot and told him what she saw of him. Hi, honey. He said to her. She flashed him a quick, tight smile and looked away. Then she looked back for a moment and smiled more warmly, but this time he was looking at something else. Hi, he said to a small lot of creatures from the press who were standing nearby, wishing that he would stop saying hi and go on with the quotes. He grinned to them, particularly because he knew that in a few moments she would be giving them one hair of a coat. The next thing he said, uh, though, was not a lot of use to them. One of the officials of the party had irritably decided that the president <coughs> was clearly not in mood to read the uh, deliciously turned speech that had been written for him. He had flipped the switch on the remote control device in his pocket. Away in front of them, a huge white uh, dome was bulged against the sky, cracked down the middle, spilled, and slowly pulled itself down into the ground. Everyone gasped, although they had known perfectly well it was going to do that, because they'd build it that way. Finish it, they uncovered a huge starship, 150 meter long, shaped like a slick learning shoe, perfectly white and mind-blowingly beautiful. At the heart of it, on thin, a small gold box which carried within it the most brain-wrenching device ever conceived. A device which made this starship unique in the history of the galaxy, a device after which the ship had been named the Heart of Gold. Wow! Said Zappa the Bible blocks to the Heart of Gold, there wasn't much else he could say. He said again because he knew it would annoy the press. Wow! The crowd turned their face back toward him expectantly. 
he winked at Lillian, who raised her eyebrows and widened her eyes at him. He knew what he was about to say and thought him a terrible show up. That's really amazing, he said. That really is truly amazing. That's so amazingly amazing, I think I'd like to steal it. A marvelous presidential quote, absolutely true to form. The crowd laughed appreciatively. The newsman gleefully punched the button on their sub SR newsmatics, and the president grinned. As he grinned, his heart screamed unbearably, and he fingered a small paralysomatic bomb that nestled quietly in his pocket. Finally, he could bear it no more. He ripped his head up to the sky, let out a wild whoop in major thought, threw the bomb to the ground, and then poured through the sea of suddenly frozen beaming smiles.